Welcome to worship this day. My name is Pam Smith. I'm the pastor here at Grace Evangelical Lutheran Church in Lakeland, Florida. And a particularly warm welcome to those of you who may be visiting with us and to those who are joining us over the wonders of technology using the internet. Today is the second of five Sundays in which we were going to be focusing on Jesus as the bread of life. And so I invite you to kind of mull over that notion of bread in your mind's eye, see what images come up, what remembrances, what memories come up, and let's see what word the Spirit has for us today. August is um, the month for school supplies for our social ministry program. We provide school supplies to Oscar Pope Elementary School. And in the narthex on the, the desk there is a supply list that looks something like this. And so if you would like to participate, please grab one of the lists and pick up some of the items um, on that. And then they can be brought to church Sunday morning or if need be um, during the morning office hours during the week. But the most important thing for today is that we want to welcome Harold back. Harold, come on up here. Come on, come on up here. <laughs> Harold, welcome back from your, the first of three years of grad school. Mm -hmm. Give us a few words about how it went. Oh, gosh. <laughs> busy, busy, and busy. Is that right? Those are three <laughs> words. Ooh, it was so busy, um, but it was also very rewarding and enjoyable all at the same time. We're wonderful. Thank you. Glad that you're here. And already, um, Harold and I have had some conversation about ways that we do things in worship that reflect some of the learnings that he had in school, and so we're delighted to benefit from your experience. Thank you so much, Harold. And also, um, you might remember that we started this plant the first Sunday after Pentecost because we're focusing during this particular liturgical season on the growth of the church and also then the growth of the disciples. And guess what? Each of us, of course, are disciples as well. I didn't get a before picture on that first Sunday, but I did a couple Sundays later. And I think in your mind's eye, you can see how much it has grown since that time. And I hope that that is the case for you as well. And so with that then, we prepare our hearts and our minds for worship.
Would you please stand? And so it is then that we make our beginning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You are invited to remain standing as you are able as Harold sings the opening hymn on our behalf. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe that there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the very manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, eternal goodness, immeasurable love, you place your gifts before us. We eat and are satisfied. Fill us and this world in it all its need with the life that comes only from you through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated for the readings. <clears throat> The first reading is from the 16th chapter of Exodus. The whole congregation of the Israelites set out from Elam 
and Israel came to the wilderness of Sin, which is between Elam and Sinai, on the 15th day of the second month after they had departed from the land of Egypt. The whole congregation of the Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt, when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread, for you have brought us out to this wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, I am going to rain bread from heaven for you, and each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. In that way I will test them whether they will follow my instruction or not. On the sixth day, when they prepare what they bring in, it will be twice as much as they gather on other days. So Moses and Aaron said to all the Israelites, In the evening you shall know that it was the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt, and in the morning you shall see the glory of the Lord, because he has heard your complaining against the Lord. For what are we that you complain against us? And Moses said, When the Lord gives you meat to eat in the evening and your fill of bread in the morning, because the Lord has heard the complaining that you utter against him, what are we? Your complaining is not against us, but against the Lord. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of Israelites, Draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of the Israelites, they looked toward the wilderness, and the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the complaining of the Israelites. Say to them, At twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening, quails came up and covered the camp. And in the morning, there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted, lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was a fine, flaky substance, as fine as frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, It is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. The word of the Lord. We will read verses from Psalm 78 responsively. Yet he commanded the skies above and opened the doors of heaven. Mortals ate of the bread of angels. He sent them food in abundance. He rained flesh upon them like dust, winged birds like the sand of the seas. And they ate and were well filled, for he gave them what they craved. The second reading is from Ephesians, the fourth chapter. I, therefore, the prisoner in the Lord, beg you to lead a life worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to the one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in all. But each of us was given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore, it is said, when he ascended on high, he made captivity itself a captive. He gave gifts to his people. When it says he ascended, what does it mean but that he had also descended into the lower parts of the earth? He who descended is the same one who ascended far above all the heavens, so that he might fill all things. 
The gifts he gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ, until all of us come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to maturity, to the measure of the full stature of Christ. We must no longer be children, tossed to and fro and blown about by every wind of doctrine, by people's trickery, by their craftiness and deceitful scheming. But speaking the truth in love, we must grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by every ligament with which it is equipped, as each work is, part is working properly, promotes the body's growth in building itself up in love. The word of the Lord. We stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, Lord. The next day, that is the day after the feeding of the thousands and the day that Jesus walked on the water, the crowd that had stayed on the other side saw that there had been only one boat there. They also saw that Jesus had not got into the boat with his disciples, but that his disciples had gone away alone. Then some of the boats from Tiberias came near the place where they had eaten the bread after the Lord had given thanks. So when the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into the boats and went to Capernaum looking for Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered them, Very truly I tell you, you are looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. Do not work for the food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you, for it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Then they said to Jesus, What must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to Jesus, what sign are you going to give us then so that we may see it and believe you? What work are you performing? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness. As it is written, he gave them bread from heaven to eat. <clears throat> then Jesus said to them, very truly I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread from heaven, but it is my father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. They said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. <clears throat> Grace to you and peace from God and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Would you please pray with me? May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Take a breath. Take a moment right now, what is it in your life that you are most hungry for? We're talking about bread today. Bread. Do you have a favorite taste or memory of bread? My husband Earl often spoke of a slathery garlic bread that was a side dish for the neighborhood barbecue of ribs. His dad had brought this tradition north to Indiana from his childhood home in Ruleville, Mississippi, a home he left with the proverbial knapsack over his shoulder at the ripe old age of 10. 
to head north to places of better opportunity than the deep rural south. And I remember Lefsa. Anybody here know Lefsa? A few people know Lefsa. A Norwegian potato flatbread. It doesn't sound very good. My great aunt Christine prepared it on her wood stove in the family homestead, established as they came from Norway, hot off the skillet, slathered with butter and brown sugar, rolled up and bitten into, oh, brought from a distant land. Just thinking about it whets my appetite. Bread. A staple of all lands near and far, the deep south of the United States and the land of the midnight sun, Norway. Nearly every culture in each land has a bread that is unique to their people. And truth be told, our need for bread unites us as one people as much as our hunger does, our hunger for things seen and unseen. The story is told of the end of the Second World War. Allied troops started turning their attention to the problem of the number of orphaned children living on the streets of Europe. So they set up special camps where the children could be cared for and gathered as many of them as they could, those children who had lost their families. The camps provided everything they needed, food, shelter, safety, medicine, play, entertainment. But in spite of the excellent care that they received, despite the love and attention that they received from those caring for them, many of the children were so traumatized that they could not sleep at night. Then someone came up with an idea. Let's give each child a loaf of bread not to eat, but to sleep with. Holding their bread, the children were finally able to sleep through the night. For those children, the bread was a sign, a sign that said, I have eaten today, and I will be able to eat again tomorrow. Hope, right? Bread, a staple necessary for life, bread, hope, necessary for life. When the people of God, led by the prophet Moses, escaped slavery in the land of Egypt, they entered into the wilderness and began their journeying that extended for 40 years. And by the 15th day of the second month, they were getting a little bit hungry. So hungry that they began their ongoing recurring pattern of murmuring and grumbling and complaining and whining. And they even said that they wished that they were back in Egypt. It wasn't really all that bad, was it? Remember how wonderful it was? We got to have leeks and cucumbers. Oh, that we could do it again. Oh, those days in Egypt. Their memories were very, very short. Yet God heard the cries of God's people in the wilderness who were hungry and told Moses that bread would be rained down from heaven each day, enough for that day. And not only that, but there would be quail for them to eat each night. God's provision for God's people to sustain them as they wandered the journey being shaped into a community of the faithful, the community of God's people. Bread. Not the nice basket of warm rolls that is set out as a pre-appetizer when we go out to dine, remember those days not the extra loaf taken out of the freezer when we want to have wheat bread for our lunch sandwich instead of the white bread that was already open. No, this is bread, the essential staple common to virtually every society and culture. Bread, 
a necessity in ancient times. My friends, those who heard Jesus' words following the feeding of the thousands just days before. And bread, a necessity to us today. To those thousands, perhaps as many as 15,000, who had just been fed the day before in a miraculous way, those thousands were not merely at risk of missing their lunch while following Jesus. No, these thousands were at the margins of society, the borders of the empire, at the brink of starvation every day because of the systemic issues that rewarded the haves and dismissed the have-nots. These are the people whom Jesus fed, and these are the people who followed, searching for Jesus. These are the people to whom Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Yes, you remember that God gave your ancestors food in the wilderness every day, every morning. Great is God's faithfulness. Manna. Manna. When the people woke up that first morning, they looked at the ground and said, what is it? And in Hebrew, that's translated manna. This manna is bread that would spoil if they tried to save it up and preserve it. Bread that needed to be given new each day. And then Jesus goes on to say that he was the true bread that God gives from heaven. I am the bread of life. He was there in their midst. He was present among them. He, the bread of life, Jesus, incarnate God, God with skin on, this one who walked among them. This one who provided wine for the wedding, hundreds of gallons of the finest wine. This one who provided bread for thousands with 12 harvesting baskets left over, more than enough abundance, abundance that is based on Jesus' presence with them. And my friends, Jesus is abundantly present with us now, today. Like those orphans who were given the loaf of bread to sleep with so that they knew that there would be food tomorrow, hope. Hope that does not disappoint. Hope because Jesus is present. In a few moments, we too will eat and drink in a miraculous meal, a meal we may receive as, un, as naively and unknowingly as those... Let me start that sentence all over again. In a few moments, we too will eat and drink in a miraculous meal. A meal that we may receive as naively and unknowingly as those thousands received a meal from what? Five barley loaves and two fish. And yet, they were fed nonetheless. We who are hungry and starving for hope and grace and generosity, we who live in a parched land, and aren't there places throughout our country that are in the midst of extreme drought and around the world the same, yet that is not the only source of the dryness that we experience. Many are experiencing a dryness of spirit, whatever the source of that dryness is. It is we, we who are beckoned to the table of the Lord, and we come running because we are hungry, hungry for the very presence of Jesus in our lives, our lives individually and our lives together. The story is told of a parishioner who said to their pastor, Pastor, I can't possibly come to Holy Communion. 
I'm not worthy. I've done things that are wrong. And that pastor wisely said, oh, not only do you come, you come running down the aisle. You will be fed. So as you prepare to come to this holy table, please do this. Reflect again on what it is that you are really hungry for. Listen for a word from the Lord about this hunger, whether it is in the words of our hymns, a word in the liturgy, in word in the prayers, reflect in the quiet places in your heart. And as you come, bring with you a childlike hope of receiving that which will sustain you on your journey. Come knowing that Jesus is fully present. Come knowing that Jesus will meet your need, the deepest need of your parchedness. As you receive bread and wine, body and blood, be aware. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Spend a moment savoring this Jesus who is God incarnate, this Jesus who graces us with his presence. And as you depart, go forth in hope, clutching that loaf, as did those orphan children, knowing that all shall be well because of Jesus' abundant presence with us as we go forward, following him into the world around us, a world that needs him so. Amen. So when you call your family, Lord, we follow and rejoice. You satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come give to us, O saving Lord. The bread of life to eat. With joyful lips we sing to you our praise and gratitude that you should count us worthy, Lord, to share this heavenly Satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come, give to us, O saving Lord, the bread of life to eat. Is not the cup we bless and share? the blood of Christ our poor. Do not one cup, one loaf declare our oneness in the Lord. You 
satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come, give to us, O saving Lord, the bread of life to eat. The mystery of your presence, Lord, no mortal tongue can tell, whom all the world cannot contain, comes in our hearts to dwell. You satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come, give to us, O saving Lord, the bread of life to eat. You give yourself to us, O Lord, then selfless let us be to serve each other in your name in truth and charity. You satisfy the hungry heart with gift of finest wheat. Come, give to us, O saving Lord, the bread to eat. Would you please stand? Let us then confess our Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Rooted in Christ and sustained by the Spirit, we offer our prayers for the Church, the world, and all of creation. You call your Church to be the body of Christ. Awaken all the baptized to the gifts you provide for carrying out the work of ministry. Where the church is divided, knit us together and restore the unity of the faith. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You command the clouds above and cause the wind to blow in the heavens. Watch over deserts and wilderness places. Regenerate rainforests. <coughs> defend species at risk of extinction, and strengthen the work of conservation organizations. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You summon leaders to respond to the needs of your people. Instill those who govern with patience when confronted with grievances and pers perseverance in seeking what promotes the well-being of the community. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You draw near to those who cry out for help. Feed those who are hungry. Reassure those who are despairing and accompany those who are imprisoned. Heal those who are sick, particularly Elena, Jenna, Marilyn, Margaret, Anna Mae, Julie, Alan, Michael, Ken, Carol, Anne, Alan, Joanne, Beth, Betty, D. 
Dion, Dottie, Teresa, Dottie, Kim, Tim, Glenn, Ruth, Henry, Mary, Greg, and Joyce, Barbara, and Shelby. Rain down the true bread from heaven that gives life to the world. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You receive all who come seeking a sign of grace. Make this a congregation a place of hospitality for those accustomed to rejection. To those who have felt excluded here or elsewhere, prepare us to welcome them in the name of Christ. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You provide food that endures for eternal life. Sustain us each day with the bread of life until we are gathered with all the saints and feast together at your heavenly banquet. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Lord, we are mindful this day of the tremendous damage and danger and risk of the pandemic that is among us and around the world. We ask that you be with those who are sick, comfort those who are dying, strengthen and encourage those medical workers and first responders. Help us, Lord, to do that which is helpful to them and benefits the common good. Hear us, O oh God. We lift these and all our prayers to you, O God, confident in the promise of your saving love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. It is at this point in the service that traditionally we receive our offerings. Of course, we are not passing plates because of, of the pandemic, and we have not for a good long while. However, plates are in the back of the sanctuary, and you may place your offerings there. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, you have set this table with your very self and called us to the feast of plenty. Gather what has been sown among us and strengthen us in this meal. Make us to be what we receive here, your body for the life of the world. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth, the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymns, saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy God, mighty Lord, gracious Father, endless is your mercy and eternal your reign. You have filled all creation with light and life. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. We praise you for the grace shown to your people in every age, the promise to Israel, the rescue from Egypt, the gift of the land of promise, 
the words of the prophets, and at this end of all the ages, the gift of your Son, who proclaimed the good news in word and deed, and was obedient to your will, even to the giving of his life. And the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Therefore, O oh God, with this bread and cup, we remember the life our Lord offered for us. And believing the witness of his resurrection, we await his coming in power to share with us the great and promised feast. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Send now, we pray, your Holy Spirit, that we who share in Christ's body and blood may live in the praise of your glory and receive our inheritance with all your saints in light. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Join our prayers with those of your servants of every time and every place and unite them with the ceaseless petitions of the Father, now and forever. Amen. Together we pray as our Lord and Savior has taught us, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. My friends, this is the Lord's table. It is the Lord who bids you welcome. All are welcome at this table. We commune at the head of the aisle. After you come forward, as directed by the ushers down the side aisle, you will receive the host. You may then go farther down the altar rail and you may take of the individual cups. Um, the ushers will direct you and we'll begin on this side and then we will move to the side. We're alternating pew by pew in order to minimize the amount of space and congestion that we have available. My friends, please come. All is now ready. to the table of mercy prepared with the wine and the bread all who are hungry and thirsty come and your souls will be fed come at the lord's invitation Receive from his nail scarred hand. Eat of the bread of salvation. Drink of the blood of the
Christ is given to you. The body of Christ is given for you. The body of Christ is given for you. of Christ is given for you. The body of Christ is given for you. The body of Christ is given for you.
Would you please stand? And now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, preserve us unto life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. And now, my friends, as we depart this place, I bid you go forth, having been fed and nourished. I bid you go forth, seeing the abundance of God around you. I bid you go forth with the hope that is ours eternally. And may the blessing of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be upon you now and forever. Amen. And now we join together in singing our sending hymn. to the world, go into all the earth, go preach the cross where Christ renews life's worth, baptizing as the sign of a rebirth, alleluia, alleluia. and pray the nights of tears give way to joyous day as seven church you follow Christ's own way the good news. Thanks be to God.